so when he talks about remembrance of Allah, the uniqueness of the Holy Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam, that his teachings, as long as it's been implemented, the word will stay alive, will continue to orbit, will continue to to provide benefit to humanities. But that's on a condition that still someone say Allah. Because the name Allah contains all the other names. And here the Holy Prophet, he said that, uh, shall I tell you the best actions that you perform, which is it's very high in the presence of your King, Allah, and better for you than giving any charities of silver and gold and better for you than to go in a battle and fight your enemy and you cut their heads and you cut yours. They said, of course, please tell us, O oh, Messenger of Allah, he said, remembrance of Allah, dhikrullah. So the chosen one, al-Mukhtar, is the name of the Holy Prophet, his name is Mukhtar. Mukhtar meaning the one who chooses. And he chose for us the best, which is the remembrance of Allah. And the one who is intelligent, he should be in a state of awareness and choose that which is Murshid, with the witnessing of the Holy Prophet وسلم, chooses for him. And he only speaks in regard to Allah. And Allah has told us very similar to what the Prophet وسلم, has said. So we seek the directions through the Murshid, through the Holy Prophet وسلم, so the same teaching is is a continuous. So whatever your worship give you, it is a very connected to what the Prophet told you, to what Allah has told us. So it's not bringing something new. And because of this, you get elevated, you get transformed and to understand that it is better than a charity and jihad, this is it's a big, very big statement. statement. And also the Holy Prophet وسلم, he said, when you pass through the, the gardens of paradise, a grace therein. They said, what is the gardens? He said, it's the gathering of the remembrance of Allah. So you don't, when you see people remembering Allah, join, and then this will be of great benefit. And the benefit of remembrance of Allah, it is that even in the places where there is, they are not totally clean, so still you could remember Allah. You're driving the car, you remember Allah. You walk, and you remember Allah. So it was in all situations. And half the only thing that you've been uh, required not to remember Allah when you go to a bathroom, so that with your tongue, but instead you could do it with your heart. And you have been commanded that you should remember Allah in every blink of an eye. That is how. It is comes by itself. You train yourself, it's be, your heart get activated, your intelligence get activated. You can't stop it from remembering Allah. And you remember constantly because you are thinking. 
the more, you know, you could talk, but you're still thinking about Allah. So remembrance of Allah by the heart and the benefit you will, you will achieve from this. So that suffering will be elevated, removed. And this is because the remembrance of Allah, He will surround the practitioners and remove all the, the negative forces around you. Regardless, it could be sickness, it could be uh, problems, you know, especially in our time now. Anywhere you go, it is just about you need a, a shower after you reach your destinations. So the dhikr will, will rotate around the dhakr, the one who remembers Allah, to protect him. And Allah, he made the remembrance as a, a canopy for the believer. So it is exactly like the haram. You go there, you are protected. Because Allah, he say, وَمَنْ دَخَلَهُ كَانَ آمِنَ Whoever enter the haram, that is the house of Allah in Mecca, he is protected there. So the same if you enter the heart, you are protected as well. And the other benefit that and it transport you from absence to being a present, from being a present to witnessing. And the benefit you receive that if you Remember Allah till you forget everything. That Allah, He will give you everything. And He will give you the capabilities to attain to every good action. So it's actually good action, they become, they come to you to be performed. Huh? And that's of course it depends on your the connection with the that which you remember. Ten percent, fifty percent, eighty, hundred. When you think of it, it is the distance, for example. Allah, he say, I am sitting with the one who remembers me. If you are remembering Allah, say, let's say it's a hundred, hundred meter distance. So if you remember, if you remember 50%, you are 50 meter closer. If you remember 99, you are nearly face to face. If you are totally absorbed and remember that mean Allah he is with you totally and that's why Allah he said the one who comes to me take one span I take one step and this is a big difference and for example in prayer he is with the the one who performing the prayer from the point of view, it's the prayer itself, not from the remembrance of Allah itself. But as far as remembrance, it's you could do it with ablution, without ablutions. Standing, sitting, laying down, on your side, whatever. So anyone who claimed to be a believer, for example, you cannot be really sure of his uh, claim till you see him saying, La ilaha illallah, La ilaha illallah, making dhikr or making prayer. And you say, Oh, yes. So that gives us an idea is this particular person he remembering Allah? And of course, we know that every the pillars of Islam or the law of Islam, it is in a very 
certain times, we just pass the Hajj. After that, you don't do it anymore. Salah, prayer is the same. The month of Ramadan is the same. But the remembrance of Allah, it's in every moment of your life. Uh, Jibreel, may peace be upon him, he told the Holy Prophet وسلم, that Allah, he say, that Allah, he say that I, O oh Muhammad, I have given your follower that which I do not give to any of the other nations. So the Holy Prophet, he said, and what is that, O oh Jibreel? Gabriel, where is it? Hmm? He said, I, he gave you fadkuruni azkurukum. Remember me and I will remember you. Did, did not give to anybody else. And this has not been said to anyone except to the Holy Prophet and his followers. And from the power and the blessing of the, the remembrance of Allah is even the angels of death, he will have to take permissions from him. You know that لَقَدْ جَاءَكُمْ رَسُولٌ لَقَدْ جَاءَكُمْ رَسُولٌ مِنْ أَنْفُسِكُمْ This is if you say it morning and evening, is actually you will be safe and you will be protected from the angel. The angel of death, he will not come near you. There's one sheikh, he was saying it for so long, he was 160 or 70 years old. Did the prophet, he came to him, he said, how long are they going to let us wait? You know? Huh? Come on. So he said, <laughs> yeah. So you could see how powerful the uh, verses of Quran. And this, uh, from uh, the benefit, the virtues of uh, remembrance of Allah, that the Prophet Moses, may peace be upon him, he asked his Lord, where do you live? So Allah revealed to him, I live in every heart of my believing slave. Every heart of my believing slave. So Allah, he said, neither my heaven or my earth contain me, but the heart of my believing slave, Abdil Mu'min, I am there. That's where he lives. And Allah, he said, it's a form of uh, like a chastisement in a gentle way. O oh, son of Adam, he say, you have done no right in regard to me. I remember you and you forget me. And the beauty of the remembrance of Allah that the sweetness it's contained in the remembrance of Allah and the recitations of, of, of the Holy Quran and in the Salah and prayer. And if you look to this tree, you will find they are all connected to the remembrance and the state of uh, bliss. The, the one who remember and the one who's remembered, they become the same. And of course, like in our time, the one to protect himself from witchcraft and from the Dajjal, evil disorder. So the remembrance of Allah will protect you as well. As we say, the Jal is the Antichrist, evil disorder. So. Uh, 
and also in remembrance of Allah, any one of any method of remembrance of Allah, it is like the remembrance of all the angelic realm. So all the angels that Allah created in the heavens is would be equivalent to that. Because the angels they have very specific remembrance where a human he have more. That's why, for example, when the angel when he created Adam, they complained, they said you created someone who was gonna shed blood and all this. He's, he told them that I know something that you do not know. So he asked him to name certain things they could not the angel would not be able to do so. So he said to Prophet Adam, he said, Adam, tell them the names. And he showed the superiorities of the Prophet in regard to the angels. And it is been said that Allah, he said that when the remembrance of Allah overpowered my slave, then I عشقني وعشقته عشقني meaning I will be intensely in love in him and he will be intensely in love with me and of course abandon remembrance of Allah it is one of and uh, accepted especially for people who are in tariqah wa alaykum as wa rahmatullah and the benefit of remembrance of God, it is the, beside the awakens of the heart, but also keep your tongue in a state of truthfulness because of the remembrance of God. And some of the earlier revelations in saying holy sayings say, remember me that's God say remember me when you are upset remember me when you are upset I will remember you when I am upset so one you don't you know you don't remember him but when you are in difficulty, then you start to ask, you say, you didn't remember me when, in that time. And remember me when you are in a state of bliss and pleased, I remember you in that state as well. And remember, if you remember me through this remembrance, you will get all of my help directed to you. And they ask someone, are you fasting? So, nice to see you. We are talking and reading about the virtues of remembrance of God. And uh, they asked Rahib. Rahib meaning is actually it's uh, A monk, you know, they live in the caves and all this. Are you fasting? He said, I am fasting with the remembrance of Allah. And if I mention other than Allah, I will break my fast. So he's constantly connected to, to God. They said to one of the uh, saints, what will you do if you are taken and you put on a deserted island and there is no one there to talk to? He said, I will emulate like the, in, emulate the angelic realm. So I stay and eat and stay 
in a continuous state of remembrance of God. This will be my breakfast, my lunch, and my dinner remembrance. Because remembrance, it is, uh, it is food, it is a nourishment. So as the body, physical body, he needs solid food, and the, the, the soul, he, he needs also food of impressions, thinking, and this uh, type of food. But the spirit needs higher food, a different food altogether. And this food is divine, divine food, which is the remembrance of God, the prayers and the like, reading holy books. And the benefit of the remembrance of God, it is give a beautiful sweetness to the spirit. Because it comes from the greatness of God. And the amazing thing that everybody, in one way or another, they remember God. But some they are conscious, some they are not conscious. So there is no such thing someone is saying, he does not remember God. So for example, for the body to remember God is to be used so you can't eat with your eyes. You have to see with your eyes. By seeing with your eyes that you are remembering God. Because God gave you the eyes to look and to see with them. Your hearing is the same. So your body is obeying God the way he created him and make him function the way he is. So that's a remembrance. And it's the same remembrance of God also. Assalamu alaikum. How are you? And if you look you know, in the prayer, the prayer there is a three distinct postures, which is standing straight, and then bending halfway, and then you go to prostrations. This is a prayer. And from a universal point of view, everything in the world, when we say the word really, we mean specifically the earth. You know, we're not talking about Jupiter's or Mars, or just the earth, because they have their own way of praising God. Now, they praise God, they perform a prayer according with their shadow. And if you look to your shadow, it is in prostrations, and then get longer, standing, and then further. So there is a, so many movement, and that is actually your body is performing a prayer even when you are not conscious of performing a prayer. That's your shadow performing on your behalf when you are not doing what you're supposed to do. And remembrance of God is also connects to all the celestial bodies and all the forms in the universe and all these celestial bodies that beyond our s celestial realm, what you call the solar system, beyond that. So it's actually when you remember God, you connect to these forces and provide you with more energy. And anyone who remembers God all in that time, and in a later time, also he will be protected through the remembrance of God. Because the energy created by mentioning the name, the divine name, that attracts angelic being. And when angelic being is closer to you, any other negative forces, bad forces, they will uh, not come near you. If you if you want to experiment, you could do it. Remember Allah, say, for 
half an hour or something. If you are going to uh, do a business, you have a meeting with someone and you're worried about it. You know, they will not do what you're asking of them or you're worried of something will not go right. And if you do remembrance of Allah, say, say, Bismillah ar-Rahman rahim in the name of Allah, the compassionate, the merciful. So you say 786. And then when you go to do your business, the energy you bring with you, so overwhelming, is actually the person there, he will, it will be too much for him. He will actually will do what you want, and he will just, he want to get rid of you as fast as he could. Because your light is eating into his darkness. And that's, yeah, he, and he start to feel, uh, he's not sort of hating you, but he feels there is something about you. It is, you know, feel like just you want to do what you want and just to go away. Because when we remember God, is God is remembering us. Imagine that now, this is a phone. phone. So imagine telephone ring and you've got the president of the United States, Obama. So I want to say, do you know who this is? Do you know who this is? You know, president of the United States is called. Amazing. And he say, how are you? You know, Brother Ahmed, <laughs> yeah, you will tell everybody, you will ring immediately, ring the wife. Do you know, I got a phone from, you yeah? know. But imagine when you say Allah, then Allah, he say yes to you. Yeah. That's why it is, say, say yes to God. God, he will say yes to you. That is the heaven, the heaven's gate, the key to heaven's gate is La ilaha illallah. No? Mm. Because, you know, here for example, if you want to weigh potatoes, you go to the supermarket is there, but you can't. You have a piece of gold, you want to weigh it. You can't put it on the same scale as the potatoes. It's a different commodity altogether. So the scales that weigh the energy that comes from the remembrance of God, that's totally different energy. It requires a very precise scales. So that's when people, they weigh gold or diamonds, they have a special scale which just closes uh, the scale and no wind goes in. Just a touch of a wind could increase the rise by 500, 600 doors. You know, you go, just with the blow of your breath, this, the other scale will go like this and say, so, ah, so many thousand more. So when you come to remembrance of God and doing activities, you know, active of charities, active uh, of good behavior, and when we, th we say active charity, even just to smile, to have a nice conduct, to help someone, to help, just, you know, People, they used to do things and they don't see them as a, a proper behavior. You know, hold the door for someone. Uh, you are sitting on a bus and uh, someone older comes in, you you off and, and the other person sits. Now, even if you try to do this, the other person say, thank you, I don't need your chair. You know, so people they themselves, these ideas of me, and I am capable to do anything, and I don't want the help of no one, it's ingrained in the mentalities of peoples. So you get someone who will not accept the help of 
their relatives and their close ones, but he would be quite content and happy being, being bossed around in the old people's home. They treat them not in a very decent way, and they, they shut their mouth. And this, this is sometimes they call it, this is the fight of the energy, because they are, the energy very same, so they are, they lock in like this. But the energy, if they are different, so if they have, they, they actually, they lock the, in, what do you say? Intertwine. Intertwine, and they, because they are different. So that's why we tolerate people who are not related to us. But people who are related to us, we, we feel very quickly we lose our uh, composers or, or whatever. And that's why people, they, they go to others, people who they think maybe could solve their problems. Jafar <laughs> Sadr, he's the grand, the great grandson of the Holy Prophet. Uh, a group of philosophers, he was sitting and remembering Allah, God, and group of philosophers, they came to him and they said, to, we like to ask you questions. And the question is, what is the most powerful proof that the one you're remembering, God that you remember, he does exist? What's the proof? He said to him, the proof is my existence. Because my existence, it is not like the existence of God. So God is, he exists before everything else. So I'm, I accept I'm a secondary existence. And I exist without, by God, because I do not have any participations in my existence. Because I can't say I was, by saying I was already, that means I did not exist. And the one who exists before everything else, it is God. And his existence is not being given to him by anybody else. As for the rest of the creations, they have the secondary existence. And this indicates that the one I am remembering, he's the one I am indicating to him a longing for his nearness. And he's the creator, and he's the one who gives every action life to exist. And someone he asked, Sayyidina Ali, he is the son-in-law of the Holy Prophet. He said, do you remember the one you see or the one you know? So when you remember God, do you remember him because you see him or because you know him? He said to him, I will not worship any, any Lord that I cannot see. So that means he is in a state of unveiling. Mm. He's, so he said to him, how did you see him? He said, I did not see him with my physical eyes, but the eye of my heart. I have seen him with the eye of my heart and with the realities of knowledge. So the eye of the heart and the real knowledge, both, you need both. 
and it continues more and more because most of the messages you know the hundred and twenty four prophets and messengers of Allah of God to humanity they all been sent is to remind people to remember God that is the purpose the holy prophet may peace be upon him when he first God told him to tell the people in his regions. So he used to say to them, oh people, say there is no God but one God. You will be successful. So he didn't say, come I will show you how to do business or do this or to increase your wealth. But he said, say there is no God but one, you will be successful. So they were complaining. He said, this is a crazy. He said, he made all the gods one. How can that be? So is the problem is this the multiplicities of gods. You get confused. In every group they worship different God. Where is God? God, he said, there is no gods but I. In the, in the first commandments, in the Ten Commandments, the first one, your God is one. That's it. Not two, not three. And when you have one, you really you have uh, a great uh, bush to uh, illumination and a state of the ultimate happiness. Because from one, you could go to true realities. But if otherwise, you get hindered.